This is the Horse Radio Network. This is Episode 5 of Equestrian Legends. Hello, I'm Chris Stafford, and my guest this week is Italian show jumper Colonel Piero Dinzeo. Colonel Piero Dinzeo was born on March 4, 1923, in Rome, Italy. His father, Constante Dinzeo's influence as an equestrian, encouraged his oldest son into the saddle at an early age, and he soon became widely recognized as a stylish and technical rider. Success came easily and often with an illustrious career on the Italian show-jumping team spanning four decades. Piero Dinzeo cast a dashing figure in the saddle that was at once classical and handsome, attracting admiration wherever he went. Colonel Ahern of the Irish Army once wrote of the Italian Army that the beauty of their performances should serve as an incentive to all riders to emulate them. They achieved this perfection by adhering to correct principles and were able to apply any of the accepted methods of achieving precision in such a way as to make their application of the aids almost imperceptible. Their approach to the jump was always calm, unruffled and brilliantly alert, and the manner in which they went with their horses was a joy to watch. An individual silver and team bronze medal at the Rome Olympics in 1960 on the rock was to be one of six Olympic medals which began with the 1956 Stockholm Games, winning both the team silver and individual bronze riding Uruguay. In 1964, he won another team bronze medal at the Tokyo Olympic Games riding Sunbeam, followed by a fourth team medal in Munich in 1972 with Easter Light. His European Championship record began with a silver medal in Aachen in 1958, a gold in Paris a year later, and bronze in London in 1962. No mean feat, since the format of changing horses for the final, which is used at World Equestrian Games, was also used in the early days of the European Championships. Interspersed with these championships were 41 wins in Nations Cups, 29 Grand Prix victories, including five occasions in Aachen, seven in Rome on seven different horses, and three King George V Gold Cups in London. In addition to his show-jumping success, Piero also found time to record 38 wins as a jockey, of which 24 were over fences. In 1966, the late equestrian journalist Pamela McGregor Morris wrote, The Italians have virtually dominated the show-jumping scene in Europe since shortly after the last war. And that, she wrote, was very largely due to the immense superiority of the Dinzeo brothers, Colonel Piero Dinzeo was a career officer, rising to commander-in-chief of the Italian Cavalry Riding School in Rome until his retirement. Piero and his wife live in Rome. They have two sons and two daughters. The translator is former Italian eventing Olympian Mario Turner. Well, it is a pleasure to have you on the show, given your contribution to equestrian sport and, of course, your fantastic record as a show jumper. It is indeed a pleasure to have you. And I would like to start by beginning with with some background to your early life, how your parents prepared you for life and the values that they instilled in you as a young boy. Sono molto onorato di sentirla interessarci ai problemi del cavallo. He is thankful that you are interested in uh, talking about horses. We are always talking about horses on Equestrian yes. Legends and we share that passion and I, I want to get a sense of where you grew up in Italy and how you got into horses in the first place. Dunque, è molto bene come come è mentalità e devo dire che hanno molto insistito perché avessi curiosità e mi, mi applicassi a tutte le cose che facevo. He says his parents have prepared him very well, they prepared his, his mindset to life, and they transferred especially curiosity and the, the need uh, for application and commitment to whatever he would have done later on in life. Where did you grow up and how were you introduced to horses? Io sono nato a Roma, 
He was born in Rome. Mio padre dirigeva una scuola di equitazione e allora alla, quando io avevo 12 anni con l'autorizzazione di mia madre per la prima volta montai un pony. His father managed uh, when he retired from the army managed a riding school in Rome and uh, when Piero was 12 with the agreement with the consent of his mother he was allowed to ride for the first time a pony at 12 and how did the interest in jumping come about he says he rode mainly to exercise physically to, to make gymnastics were you interested in school or were you distracted by your horses no ero ero appena sufficiente negli studi per guadagnarmi di poter montare a cavallo. He says that uh, he was, as, as a scholar, as a student, he was just adequate to <laughs> earn the right to go riding. <laughs> Otherwise, his parents wouldn't, would not have let him go. When you reflect on your childhood, what do you think of most? Con più piacere ricordo i concorsi a cui mio padre mi accompagnava, o meglio si faceva accompagnare, per vedere certi bravi cavalieri militari. The memories is most fond of is when his father took him to watch show jumping and when he was able to see great military riders in action. Was it the military riders that inspired your career or were there civilians also that influenced you and who were they? Ma eh, io vivevo degli apprezzamenti di mio padre che non badava a divise o a abiti civili e mi, mi indicava sempre quali erano i migliori cavalieri in assoluto. He says that he depended a lot on the judgment of his father who indicated the best riders and the best riding attitudes uh, disregarding whether they were military or civilian. But at that time the military share of the riders was uh, much more much higher than today because of the cavalry you are famous for being a proponent of the caprilli style was that just the military influence or were there other civilian influences and of course in the very simple tack that you used at that time l'ho applicata da subito anch'io perché vedevo che dava il giusto rendimento Il, il cavallo deve potersi svolgere secondo la sua natura, non secondo quella del cavaliere. He, he says he, he, he took on this uh, simple tack way from the very beginning when, when, when he realized that this provided the best results because he feels that the horse should express himself by himself and not according to what the rider wants. The classical style, of course, and not only the style, but also the intuition and the, the sensitivity and the rhythm, which prompts me to ask if there were any other influences in your life, such as music or the arts, that helped you as a rider. Dunque, eh, per, siccome ho studiato anche pianoforte, ho imparato a dare ritmo ad ogni attività. He, he studied the piano when he was young, and, and, and that taught him to, to give rhythm to whatever activity he did. When you were riding, what did you perceive to be your greatest strengths, and did you have any weaknesses? Because if you did, they certainly were not obvious. Ma eh, all'apice della, della mia carriera ho sempre cercato di continuare ad essere così. He said, continuity in applicating his style and his way of riding to keep being as he was. Ma eh, i punti di debolezza erano diciamo la la, la continuità dell'applicazione eh, classica e non dare spazio alle iniziative personali. This is as, as a weakness might have been that he wanted to follow the classical application of riding and not following the uh, personal interpretation due to the specific situations which he found himself. Si è evoluto agli effetti della, diciamo, delle tattiche da adoperare secondo il genere di gare che facevo. 
però è rimasta sempre eh, l'impostazione classica che ho imparato da ragazzino. His style has evolved when he needed to adapt to the tactics required by the specific type of different competitions he did. But in a general sense, he has never changed since when he was a young boy. When you reflect on that time of your career, what did you enjoy most then and what do you now enjoy as a memory? Ma sono naturalmente i momenti di che si collegavano ai risultati, i momenti di felicitazioni e di riconoscimenti da parte dei cavalieri già fermati. He says that this is, of course is linked to his wins, the moments when people paid compliments to him and especially all the good riders of, of his time came to pay compliments and to felicitate him for, for what he did. These are uh, his fondest memories. And of all the successes and all the great horses that you have ridden, of which accomplishments would you be most proud of? I risultati che mi hanno dato maggiore soddisfazione sono quelli di squadra. The results that gave him the most satisfaction were the team results. When you watch the sport today and reflect on how it used to be, what do you enjoy about it or not? Mi fa piacere quando vedo che il cavallo è adoperato senza brutalità. In più, quando si segue un un diciamo un criterio logico e naturale nell'impiego del cavallo senza voler rinforzare né la volontà e né lo sforzo what he, what he likes to see is when he, he can watch a horse being used without any form of uh, brutality or violence without forcing the horse to do things and uh, when the horse is used in the most a logical way, asking him to do his best without being forced. This is what he likes. Oh, questo soprattutto nella fase di preparazione, sia in campo di prova che nel lavoro. Especially in the preparation phases, in the training ground, training field before the competition or in the work at home. Are there any riders today that use the classic style that you enjoy watching? Sì, indubbiamente, eh, innanzitutto tutti gli americani e poi i, i francesi nella persona di Michel Robert, i tedeschi nell'acquisita americana eh, Merit, eh, la moglie Meredith Berbaum. He says, first of all, the American team, then the French, but it, personified in the riding of Michel Robert. And then the Germans, but mainly Meredith Michaels Berbaum, former American rider. How do you think your successful career as a horseman affected the rest of your life? L'impatto principale è che è stato un insegnamento di vita e che mi hanno praticamente imposto le discipline a cui mi dedicavo sia nel completo che nel, nelle gare di salto ostacoli. He said the main impact is the lesson of life that he received from riding, uh, thanks to the discipline, respect of animals, the, both in, in three days eventing and in show jumping. Do you have a life motto that has helped you with your life as a horseman, as a person? Sì, il motto del reggimento a cui io appartenevo, che era la scuola militare di equitazione, il, il motto era non ristare. The, the motto is the motto of the regiment to which he belonged and that he commanded for many years, the military riding academy or school. And the motto is in Latin non ristare, which you could translate into don't rest, don't hang back, don't stop. How did you overcome adversity in the sport? Considerando le superabili. By considering them conquerable. A wonderful answer. And was there anything that had intimidated you as a rider? Niente. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> wonderful. 
And, and of course, I have to ask you then, what entertains you? What what is it that makes you laugh? Not just with horses, but in life generally. Ti fa ridere quando la gente pretende di sapere quello che non sa. What makes him laugh most is people who pretend to know and in reality does not know anything. Very good answer. <laughs> Has there been someone in your life who's been a big supporter and what has that meant to you? Sì, che cosa mio padre, con l'esempio. His father yes. with his example. Are you a big reader and, and what books would you be reading? Do you read about horses or other things? Oh, ma mi, mi piace ogni tanto rileggere i, i trattati di equitazione. C'è sempre da imparare. He likes to read uh, essays on uh, horse riding. Uh, he says there is always to, something to be learned. And from which countries would those essays be of most interest? Ma di tutte le nazionalità, soprattutto francesi e portoghesi. You would say French and Portuguese. Yes, interesting. A more modern question now for you. What does the Internet mean to you? Does it have any role in your life? Ne penso che è una novità di comodo e che per me è ancora è una cosa dire snobbata. He says that it's a convenient, easy innovation and for, for the time being he still uh, he snobs it. He says he considers it of marginal importance for the time being. And if you have any advice at all for young people coming into the sport of show jumping How would you characterize that? Ma il consiglio che darei è quello di prenderla molto sul serio e soprattutto di fare qualunque sacrificio per ottenere quello che si desidera. His main advice would be to take riding very seriously and to be ready to make whatever, whichever uh, sacrifice is required to reach the objectives that you have in mind. And also... Um, Another secondary question to that, because we see a lot of young people coming to the sport that become riders, but are not necessarily established as horsemen and women. What advice would you give them to consider not just the time they spend in the saddle, but the time they spend out of the saddle, in the stables, to develop themselves as horsemen and women? Tutto è utile, ma soprattutto riconoscere gli errori che si fanno e cercare di non ripeterli. Everything is useful, but mainly to avoid the mistakes that, that, that are normally done and, and especially try not to repeat them. And finally, Piero, at the end of the day when you close the door now, what has meant the most to you in your career and how would you like to be remembered as a horseman? Ma de, quando spengo la luce mi piace di ripensare a quello che ho fatto e che cosa mi piacerebbe di essere ricordato come un amico onesto. When he switches off the light at night, he likes to think to whatever he has done, to, to everything that he has done in his career. And he would like to be remembered as a straight and honest uh, friend to everybody. And finally, Piero, what message would you like to give? Is there anything that you would like to add? Considerare l'equitazione non un mezzo per, per esibirsi, ma soltanto una, una sana attività, non solo diciamo, di lucro, di, di una, 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 una sensibilità di, diciamo, di, di, di programmi personali, ma soltanto di interesse per lo sport. In, in poche parole, l'equitazione odierna eh, produce facilmente eh, meriti incapaci, casualmente vincitori, ma sicuramente bravi charlatani con una stampa che può essere corrotta o incompetente. He would like to recommend not to consider riding as a mean to exhibit oneself, but as a sound, much sounder activity to make a program and follow it and become a 
seriously a good writer. He said that current, the, the modern uh, equitation, modern show jumping, produces easy credits, easy uh, successes that might, riding that might become uh, winning riding with the press, which is uh, easy, to, who are accustomed to, to praise the riders without having any competence. So he would like to think of riding as a much more serious affair than, than it is today. Well, on that note, Piero, I want to thank you so very much for spending time with us on the show and what a delight it's been and a true honor to have spent this time with you. Thank you so much indeed. Me too. I, I have a very pleasure to, to see you. And uh, I hope uh, to know you um, as best possible. As soon as possible. He would, he would like to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed for your time, sir. Thank you. Okay. Please join me again next time to celebrate the life of another equestrian legend. Mm-hmm.